This video will introduce Thymeleaf, which is the framework used to generate views in the sample application. And to understand how Thymeleaf fits into the bigger picture of the entire application, let's have a look again at this image from the video on Spring Web MVC. So now we are here. Thymeleaf is the view generation framework, which generates HTML documents that are sent as HTTP responses. Note that Thymeleaf is involved only on the way out when generating HTTP responses. Thymeleaf has nothing to do at all with HTTP requests. It is not involved on the way in. Why do we need a view generation framework at all? That is because we need dynamic views, dynamic HTML pages. We cannot have just static pages. Say for example that we want to show information about a bank account. Of course we cannot have hard-coded information. It would always show the same balance for the same account. So what the Thymeleaf actually does is that it creates HTML documents from templates. And then the question immediately arises, what is a template? Let's have a look at that now. Here is a very simple HTML document representing a bank account. Unfortunately, it's not very useful because both the account number and the balance are hard-coded. So this page will always present the same balance for the same account. Not very useful. Okay, this cannot be hard-coded. Instead, we must insert something else there that instructs the view generation framework, in this case, timely to introduce something dynamically at runtime when the page is presented. There are basically two ways to do this, and that is not typical for Thymeleaf, but there are mainly two ways used by any view generation framework, and Thymeleaf can handle both. The first is to use some kind of expression language that is a programming language that is not an entire normal programming language like Java or Python or whatever, but a more simple thing that is used to generate data, to refer to some object in model and to generate an output. There's generally no state, no variables in such a language. The statements consist of one single line generating some piece of data that can be inserted into the HTML document. Typical expression language syntax is often something like this. It could of course be anything, but this is quite often used. We refer to some object in model. For now, let's not care about how the object appeared in the model and what the model is. I will come back to that later when looking at the code. Say, for example, that we have the current account that is somehow accessible. And here we want to insert the number. It could be something like this. And then we refer to the balance here. So this is one way to insert data dynamically. Now Timely, when processing, would look up the account number and the balance of the current account and insert into the HTML document and then send the result in the HTTP response to the client. The other way to insert data dynamically into an HTML document is to use some kind of tags or attributes. And these are then not ordinary HTML tags or attributes that are part of the HTML specification but instead the tags defined by the view framework. And the view framework will then, when reading the template, replace those tags with data and HTML code. Thymeleaf normally works by adding its own attributes to existing HTML tags. It does not define its own tags. When parsing the document, Thymeleaf will manipulate the entire HTML element based on the meaning of the Thymeleaf attribute in that element. If there is no Thymeleaf attribute, that is, if there is an HTML tag without any Thymeleaf attribute at all, that element is left completely unchanged and just included in the HTTP response. And if there is no HTML element at the place where we want Thymeleaf to insert a value, then we can always create a span element just to define the place where Thymeleaf should do the insertion and to have a place where to put the Thymeleaf attribute. Thymeleaf attributes are prefixed by th. For example, th colon text means to replace the content of the entire HTML element with the value of the th colon text attribute. So th text equals acct.no would then mean that the content of this element, the span element, would be the no property of the ACCT object, which here would be the account number. And again, let's not worry about how the ACCT object became available to Thymeleaf. Oops, there is not room for the P tag. Uh, let's do like this. And then in the same way for the balance. This means Thymeleaf would replace the content of this lower span tag with the value of the balance property in the ACCT object. And when creating Thymeleaf, it was a goal to enable the HTML templates to be usable for web designers. So it, it should not look strange if just opened in the browser locally without Thymeleaf parsing. And that means it actually looks more like this. 
So here you're supposed to write some sample value that is not to be presented to the user, but just to show that some value could go there. So say that we enter the value one, two, three. Right, so when opening this HTML document in the browser without any time leaf parsing, I mean, if you just open the file, the browser would ignore this th text thing because it's not understood and would present the value one to three instead. So it would be like a sample of, of the page that is rendered to the user and is therefore usable for creating layout and web design. Instead, when passed through Thymeleaf, when it's actually used in the running application, then instead Thymeleaf will remove this uh, one to three thing and will instead insert the actual balance. How Thymeleaf actually works is that first it parses the entire HTML document and creates the DOM tree in the memory. Remember that an HTML document can be represented by a document object model, which is a, a tree of nodes representing the various elements in the HTML document. So Thymeleaf will create the entire DOM tree in memory. The tree could look something like this. Of course, it's much more detailed in reality, but just to give an idea. First there is the HTML root node, that's this one. Then there is a head, that's that one. And the body, that one. The body has an H1 and a P, actually two P, this and this. Let's just consider the first one, this. So there there is some text, the account number. This is the text. Then there is a span, this one. And the span has an attribute, th text and so on. The fact that Timeleaf creates the entire DOM tree in memory makes it fast. That's the advantage. When the same HTML document is processed the next time, there's no need to parse the file again. Everything can be done purely in memory. The results can be cached. The disadvantage of creating the DOM tree in memory is that it consumes a lot of memory. So if you have a big amount of huge HTML documents, then Timeleaf is perhaps not the best framework. Okay, now the DOM tree is in memory and the Timeleaf will then attach a processor to each node that has some Thymeleaf specific content. Nodes without Thymeleaf specific content will just be passed through as they are, nothing will be changed. But nodes that have some Thymeleaf specific content, this simple DOM tree here, it's only this one, will be handled by Thymeleaf. And Thymeleaf will attach a processor to each of those. A processor is an object internal to Thymeleaf that can handle the Thymeleaf specific thing, in this case the th text attribute, and can convert that into normal HTML according to the specification of how Thymeleaf attributes and expression language statements and so on should be handled. Okay, so there will be some amount of processors, one for e each Thymeleaf specific thing. And in the Thymeleaf language, the total of all processors is called a dialect. It should be clear now that processors are the things that define how Thymeleaf acts. By changing processors you will completely change behavior. The, each processor can understand one specific Thymeleaf tag. Thymeleaf is very flexible in this way. You can plug in new processors and you get new behavior. Okay, in the sample application we are using the Spring standard dialect which is a set of Thymeleaf processors that makes it appropriate to use together with the Spring WebMVC. So now we understand how Thymeleaf is working and now it's time to look at the code. The first thing we'll consider in the code is configuration, how to make Spring WebMVC use Thymeleaf for view generation. And to understand that we must again have a look at this image. What is it that decides which view generation framework to use? It is the view resolver. Because the view resolver decides which view generator to use. Remember this is an object that can generate the view. It is not the actual HTML document. So the view resolver decides which view generator to use. And we must have a view resolver that decides to use a Thymeleaf view generator. Which means we must have a Thymeleaf view resolver. So what is it that makes Spring Web MVC use a Thymeleaf view resolver? So this in fact is a quite typical pluggability issue. We have one framework, in this case the Spring Web MVC, and we want it to call a particular other framework, in this case Thymeleaf. But we don't want to hard code Thymeleaf in it because we want also to be able to configure it to use other view generation frameworks. A very typical way to handle this that is also used here in Spring Web MVC is to make an interface that has different implementations. View Resolver is an interface. 
and Thymeleaf provides a Thymeleaf view resolver implementation. So the dispatcher servlet just knows that it has a reference to some view resolver and whatever implementation is plugged in will be used. So we have to plug in the Thymeleaf view resolver. So that's a very typical solution. What is a bit specific to Spring Web MVC and Spring in general is the bean thinking. Everything is a bean. So in Spring MVC it works something like this. Okay, this is perhaps not exactly the code, but it gives the idea. In the dispatcher servlet, there is an attribute, something like a declaration of a view resolver, which Timelift will use to resolve the view. And this is auto-wired. So when calling the view resolver, a view resolver object will have been injected. And it is the IOC container that injects this view resolver into the dispatcher servlet. All we have to do is to make sure there is a Thymeleaf view resolver available in the IOC container. And then that one will be injected into the dispatcher servlet and used to generate views. So this is very beautiful in the sense that it's very flexible. The downside is that we have to do all this spring configuration. But luckily we have Spring Boot that handles most of the bean configuration for us. So where is the time leaf view resolver being declared? It is declared in the bank config clause, which is where all bean declarations are in this application. So let's look at that one. So here there is first the configuration annotation, which means as we know that uh, this clause can declare beans, or rather can declare bean creator methods like this one for example. Then there is also the enable web MVC annotation, which means that this clause can be used to declare beans illustrated here, like the handler mapping handler adapter, view resolver and so on. So note that there's a special annotation needed to enable declaring such beans. We're back here and finally we can have a look at the Thymeleaf view resolver creator method which is this one. So here we just create the Thymeleaf view resolver and it will be available to the IOC container which will inject it into the dispatcher servlet where it can be used. Then we set a template engine and the template engine is this view generator. So we have declared Thymeleaf view resolver bean and we tell it to use template engine for handling Thymeleaf views. And the template engine, which is returned by this method, is defined here. So this is the creator method for the template engine that will run all the Thymeleaf processors in the Spring Standard dialect. Note that we also add another dialect here. So we're not just using the Spring Standard dialect, but also the layout dialect. And the layout dialect is needed to enable Thymeleaf to reuse different fragments like headers and footers and so on, and to insert them into a specific layout, as we soon will see when looking at the Thymeleaf HTML template. We have also added here a template resolver, which is the bean created by this method here. So the template resolver is the object that decides which template to use. So remember a template here is an HTML file with Thymeleaf tags and expression language statements that will be transformed by the template engine. Okay, so the template resolver decides which template to use. And here we define where it should look for templates. It should look in a directory named webroot, which is on the class path, and templates shall have the suffix .html. So this means that when we return a particular view name, going back to the ACCT controller that was covered in the video on Spring Web MVC. So here, request handling methods return logical view name defined up here. This setting here that means that the template resolver will prepend webroot and append.html to the logical view name and then we'll search for such a file on the class path. Note that these settings here only relate to Thymeleaf templates, not to static files like CSS or JavaScript files. Where to look for those is configured down here and has nothing to do with Thymeleaf. This method will be called because this class implements the web MVC configurer interface from where this method is overridden and also because there is the enable web MVC annotation which tells Spring Web MVC that this is a configuration file for the Web MVC beans. So this method will tell where Spring Web MVC should look for static files and it will look in the same place that it looks for Thymeleaf templates. One final thing regarding these configurations is that this also implement application context aware which will make Spring call the set application context method and pass the application context object which is in fact the IOC container and this is here because resource template resolver needs it so we must pass the application context to the spring resource template resolver and that is because it needs the, the IOC container to find the templates. Okay so that was all configuration now we are finally ready to see some time leaf code. 
Okay, so now we look at the time leaf tags and template language statements used in the sample application with the help of the select account page mainly. First we see how we arrive at the select account page and now we're looking at the ACCT controller class. The first thing that will happen is that I generate a request for the root URL and then we'll arrive at the request handling method for the default page URL. So the default page URL is just the root. And what this will do is that it will send an HTTP redirect to the browser. And the browser will then generate a new request for the select ACCT page URL, which is select ACCT. And then we'll arrive at the request handling method for that URL, which just returns the same URL again. And this is where Thymeleaf kicks in. Here we return the logical view name and that will be resolved by the view resolver to th Thymeleaf view generator and finally Thymeleaf will generate the view and via the Thymeleaf view resolver and the Thymeleaf template engine we arrive at this page which is the template for the select account page this page here first there are some declarations regarding Thymeleaf up here that does not result in any output so the first line where something actually happens where some HTML is generated is this line here this line contains the decorate tag from the layout dialect remember we included also the layout dialect not just the spring standard dialect so this tag has the value of an expression language statement here. And the syntax is that the statement is included in curly braces. Also note this symbol here, which says that the expression language statement results in an HTML fragment. So there are different symbols for different results of the expression language statement. And this one tells that it regards an HTML fragment. Okay, so decorate is used to reuse different fragments of the page. For example, in this page there is the header, there's also a heading up here which includes CSS files and so on, but it's not visible on the page. There is the navigation menu, there is the main content, and there is a footer. Those are the fragments of this page. And note that everything except the main content here is identical for each page, so it should be reused. We do not want to duplicate that HTML code. Also, note that the layout is identical between each page. The header should always appear in the same place, the navigation menu always in the same place, and so on. So this means the structure of the page, the divs and the main footer and so on, HTML elements, are also the same in e each page and should not have to be duplicated. So the deck Decorate processor looks for this file here, layout.html, in the directory fragments in the directory resources. And that is used as the layout of the HTML page into which the different fragments will be included. So let's have a look at that one. So in resources, fragments, layout, HTML, this is where the HTML generation will start. Timeleaf will not go on from here just processing this document. Instead, it will start in the document indicated with the layout decorate, which contains the layout of the page. Layout is very simple, there's just, there's just a header, a nav, a main, and a footer. But anyway, this simple layout will be reused between different HTML pages. Okay, so here the layout dialect will find some replace tags that will be handled by the replace processor and also a fragment. Replace simply means that this HTML element is removed and replaced by the content of this. So this says that in the resources directory there is a fragments directory where there is a header HTML file which has a header fragment and the content of this header fragment will replace this header HTML element which will be removed. So resources, fragments, header HTML and here there is a fragment whose name is header. So the content here which is actually the header, will replace this element here. So again, note that in the expression language statement here, we use the symbol to identify an HTML fragment. Okay, so that goes for all the replace. Then there is the fragment directive in the layout dialect, which tells Thymeleaf to look for a fragment named content in the document where everything started, the select ACCT, which was referring to the layout in which we are now. Okay, so in here, Thymeleaf will look for a fragment named content, and it is here. So that means that this HTML element, the entire main section, 
will be inserted in the place where the layout fragment with the name content is in the layout HTML file. Okay, so that means that both the fragments that are similar between different pages, header, footer and so on, and the layout itself, this thing we are looking at here, will be reused between different pages. The only thing that is unique is the actual content, which is defined here in the page indicated by the logical view name returned by the request handling method in the ACCT controller. Okay, so now we know how HTML code can be reused between different HTML documents. Moving on, the next time leaf related things we find is in the form. So this is the form for account creation, this form here. First there is the action attribute here, th action. So this simply generates the URL of the action attribute. Here note that the expression language statement starts with this at sign and that means that it shall be resolved to a URL. This symbol meant HTML fragment and this symbol means URL. And we will see more symbols soon. Okay, so this URL here is quite simple. It will be exactly the same. Let's see what HTML time leaf generates here. So the form tag is here, it's this form, and the action attribute is here. And we see that the URL is exactly the one we specified in the th action attribute. Next there is the th object attribute, which defines an object that will be used inside the form element. And now note that the expression language statement starts with a dollar sign, which means it will be resolved to a, an object in the model map. To understand exactly from where this object came, we go back to the ACCT controller. Remember that this page, the one we are currently viewing, it was rendered as a result of a call to this request handling method. And remember, as was explained in the video on Spring Web MVC, that a model map is created for each HTTP request, and the model map contains attributes which are objects and they each have a name and objects that are parameters to the request handling method and that have no special meaning to Spring Web MVC but are just plain Java classes will be inserted into the model map so in fact the create ACCT form will be inserted as an attribute create ACCT form and its name is not the object name but it is the class name but with the first letter lowercase. So the name in this case is exactly the object name but it comes not from the object name. This could be what whatever XYZ. The name of the attribute will be the class name with lowercase first letter. So its name will be create ACCT form and also the object find ACCT form will be inserted and its name will be the class name with lowercase first letter namely find ACCT form. Okay so this model map was created and is present when Timeleaf is parsing the HTML document. Okay so here Timeleaf will see that we have the dollar sign meaning it should look for an object in the model map and it will look for the object with this name create ACCT form and will find th that object here. That means the object referenced here is the one that was inserted in the model map by the request handling method. Right, so now Timeleaf will operate on this object inside this form element. So inside the form element, the current object is this create ACCT form. And then note this symbol here, an expression language statement beginning with an asterisk. That means this thing will be resolved not to an object in the model map, but to a property of the current object. So here it will look for a property called holder name. And is there such a property? Let's have a look in the create ACCT form. Yes, uh, there is such a property. There is the getter method get holder name. So this is the method that will be invoked by Thymleaf to get the value of this property. That means that this input, the input text field, will be related to this hold name property. And let's have a look at the HTML rendered by Thymleaf here. So this line here is the HTML generated by Thymleaf for this input element. So here we can see that the name, which would be the name of the HTTP parameter, gets the name of this property we defined, holder name, which was the property name here. And that means that when this form is submitted, HTTP parameter and the property name will be holder name. And also now that when Timeleaf is rendering the HTML, it will insert the value of this property. Note that the value here is empty. And that is because we had not entered anything in this field yet. So this property had no value. But now we'll do something interesting, namely create an account, but enter invalid values. So when this form is now submitted, 
we will arrive at the request handling method handling a post request for the create ACCT URL and then look at the parameters there's just one parameter that will be inserted in the model map now namely the create ACCT form and now the properties will have values the values we entered so the holder name will be a and the balance will be minus one and both are in fact invalid so we will come back to the same page again and see an error message now the property values are still here. Why did they not disappear? That is because Timeleaf inserted the value here as a result of this field attribute, which can be seen here. So here the value is now A, which was the A we entered here. Right, that was the input field. So next there is this error message, this span element here, which is translated by Timeleaf into this error message here, which has this HTML here. It is a span element the class error this element here okay so first there is this if time leaf attribute that means that if the following expression language statement evaluates to true then the content of this span element will be replaced by the content generated by this th errors attribute here but if instead it evaluates to false then the entire element is removed and nothing is rendered at all no html at all okay so let's look at this expression language here First the dollar sign, meaning we refer to an object, and which object? <laughs> the object's name starts with an hash sign, and that means it is one of Timeleaf's built-in helper objects. It does not relate to the model map, that's the meaning of the hash character. And this built-in fields object has a method called has errors that will return true if there was any failed validation for the property with this name. And which property holder name? Well, the one in the object we are currently working with. So if there are such errors, then this span should be rendered. There should be HTML, and it is the HTML returned by this attribute here. So th errors will return the error message for the property holder name. See that there is this symbol here, which means the expression language statement refers to a property in the object we are currently working with. So this error message is the one that was specified in the create ACCT form for this validator here. So now we've covered everything related to Thymleaf in this file. There are other Thymleaf attributes uh, and statements here, but it's just the same things again and again. We have seen all kinds of Thymleaf things that there are here. But before we leave this file, there is one more thing I'd like to show. And that is this line. Why is this uh, find ACCT form added to the model attribute here? And why is it not here? This method is the one generating the select account page first, when we just send a GET request to view the page the first time. This is the method handling the request where we submit the create account form. The thing is that here we have both the create account form and the find account form as method parameters. So both are inserted into the model map. But here only the create account form is a method parameter. So there is no find account form inserted into the model map. And if there is an error, we want to show the select account page again. And the select account page requires the find account form. So therefore we must insert it. The select account page contains the form where you can search for an account, this form here and therefore it requires the find account form. So in fact, if we do not add the find account form to the model map, then an exception will be generated because Thymleaf will fail to parse this uh, statement here. And uh, this line also illustrates explicit naming of a model attribute. In this case, the model attribute was inserted in the model map under the class name, but with lowercase first letter. But here, where we insert it manually, using the model.add attribute method. No automatic naming will take place, but we have to specify the name ourselves. The name is the find ACCT form ob name, which is, of course, find ACCT form. And I say, of course, because that is the name used here in the Thymleaf template. And there are no other Thymleaf things in any other of the HTML files either. So that was all Thymleaf things we need to understand the sample application. And that concludes our coverage of the the Timely Framework.